Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to the new motion pilot tool with Cartoon Animator 5.2. This innovative and easy to use tool allows you to puppet both characters and props in your scene with mouse movement to quickly generate quality and complex animations in a snap. With the motion pilot tool you can modify props and characters, blend motions together flawlessly, assign automatic animations, and dictate flock behavior for object groups. This tool also supports device control with digital tablets. Different mouse movement speeds and clicks can be assigned to different actions, and there is also a lazy mouse system to enhance mouse control. We'll briefly explore all of these in this tutorial, and have other specific tutorials that go more in depth on each feature. Let's start off by looking at some puppet basics as well as free content. After you've updated to 5.2, you'll first want to change the view mode to all and refresh the content manager to install the new puppet and path pack. I'm going to use this basic puppet dummy for an initial demonstration. The Motion Pilot tool can be found under Animation in the File menu by right clicking on your object or on the left toolbar. Within the Motion Pilot tool, there are four main sections, each of which contains a number of different settings and behavior presets. This tutorial will focus on the Transform settings to keep things simple, and the other sections have their own dedicated tutorials. Go ahead and click Preview, and then press Space to test out the default settings. You'll notice that the object will follow your mouse movements and change direction based on where the cursor is. It changes direction due to the face cursor option being enabled. The X and Y values determine the direction the object is able to move and the movement strength. The Z value is at zero here, meaning that the object currently won't move along the Z axis, which you can see when you enter into 3D view. An easy way to remember which axis is which is to use the rhyme XYZ equals RGB. Let's put the Z value up to 3 and show another box I have hidden in the scene. In 3D view, we can bring the box forward on the Z axis. Now when we puppet the object and move our object up and down, it will not only move up on the Y axis, but moving the cursor up will also cause the object to move back on the Z axis, which means if we move our cursor up and down, we can have it loop around the box at different levels on the 3D plane. With face cursor active, in addition to flip, there is also turn mode. You can set the forward angle, and if you preview, you can notice now that the object smoothly follows the mouse cursor based on the forward angle we defined. There are also transform presets which you can find in the Puppet subfolder. You can see that this one spins and scales based on our mouse movement and changing the rotation axis to Y will give barely any rotation if we mouse along the X axis. Different presets all have different behaviors, so feel free to test them out for your own and see the results based on the defined parameters. Let's briefly look at some puppet samples next and how they behave with different settings. Under Puppet and Path, you'll also find a number of embedded free actors to test out. This bluefish follows the mouse with subtle spring bones assigned to its fins. This phoenix is assigned the turn setting so its directional changes are smoother. It also has a blend motion enabled so that a mouse click will cause it to flap its wings. We have a dedicated tutorial that goes more into blend motions on our Reillusion Courses page. These snail and spider characters have been assigned different lazy mouse settings. Notice that when we puppet the snail that the movements will be slightly softened based on the higher lazy mouse value in the settings. Meanwhile, the spider has a much lower setting, which allows for sharper and more dynamic movement. In addition to actors, there's also a number of props, such as this car, which is driven by mouse movement like all the others. However, you'll notice some vibration, which is driven by assigned wave motion values, which can be used in a variety of scenarios and are explained in more detail in a dedicated tutorial. Another example of mouse transform movement being combined with other parameters is this multi-prop template with butterflies. When we puppet this one around, you'll notice that the butterflies all follow each other with a slight time offset, and can also beat their wings at different intervals as well. 
This is made possible by flock behavior, where you can assign any number of objects to follow the motion and behavior of a lead object. In some cases, like we see here with these floating lanterns, you may need to puppet objects way out of the viewport area, and you'll lose your cursor. In cases like this, you can simply go to the settings, set your initial cursor position to the middle of the viewport, and then increase the transform parameters to a higher level, meaning the objects will move further with less actual mouse movement. By combining all of these features and parameters together in a variety of ways, you can really generate all sorts of creative types of animation that can be useful in a variety of scenarios. Even screen transitions like this can be set up and animated in seconds. Let's focus in once again on the various settings in the transform section. In a scenario like this where we're puppeting this plane prop, there are a couple of easy settings that we can adjust to get a better result. The first one is to disable face cursor since a sudden flip isn't suitable in this scenario with the background. Secondly, we can enable scale with uniform scale selected. You can see with the X axis selected, it will only scale down when we move to a negative X or horizontal value. We can change this to negative Y, after which the plane will then scale down when we move the cursor up on the Y axis, simulating a feeling of depth to our scene. This time, let's record by hitting the record button and then space, and I'll puppet the plane around. Notice upon playback that my mouse movement isn't as smooth as it could be. As mentioned earlier, I can increase the lazy mouse value for softer movement. A higher value will give me a better result in a lot of cases that require smoother movement. After recording, you'll notice a number of transform keys in the viewport along the puppet path. If we go up to Preferences in the Display section, there are a number of options that you can choose from to determine if or how these keys are displayed. You'll also see a number of keys have now been created in the transform track of the plane prop in the actual timeline. There won't be a key at every single frame, because if I go into the Motion Pilot settings, you can see that Transform Key Optimization is enabled. You can also go into the Custom tab of the Content Manager and save all of the puppet settings as an object puppet profile. Keep in mind that this does not save the motion that you just recorded, rather it saves the parameter settings from the Motion Pilot tool window that you set. So if you click Reset All, you can simply click and drag the profile back to your object and those settings will be restored. In this scenario, we have our plane flying towards the camera. For initial transform settings, we can increase Z and decrease Y values so that moving the mouse up and down on the screen will have more movement along the 3D Z plane than along the 2D Y axis. I can then enhance that with some slight rotation when moving along the X axis. Setting a scale value on the negative Y axis will once again shrink the plane if we move our mouse up on the Y axis, but increase its size if we move it down on the Y axis. Finally, if we have a view from above the plane, we can activate turn mode, but we still need to set our forward angle to 270 degrees in this case. Don't forget that you can also combine the smoothness parameter in the transform section with the lazy mouse value in settings to get a smoother and more even feel to your puppet behavior. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.